I'm Anuradha Mathur. I have been teaching physics at modern school Vasant Vihar. One of the most important discoveries or suggestions in the scientific world has been that matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are the small particles that constitute the entire matter, whether it is in solid, liquid or gaseous state. Molecules are formed by particular combination of atoms. This has long been said. Speculation about matter being continuous has been there for a very long time. In India, in Karnar, in Greece, in Democritus and many other places. However, the idea of atomic theory is credited to John Dalton in 1700. Having said that, uh, is all matter made up of atoms which are same? Are their combinations similar? What really happens inside materials? In order to understand that, so that we can make use of materials in our daily life, is what we need to study. We describe all matter in four states, solids, liquids, gases and plasma. Solids are those that we see around us at room temperature, which have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. Liquids on the other hand, have no fixed shape, but have a fixed volume. Gases have no fixed shape and no fixed volume. They occupy the same volume as the container. What is plasma? Plasma is ionized gas. Where does it occur on earth? In neon tubes, fluorescent tubes and the northern lights which is aurora borealis. In order to understand each of these states and as material we would be only using solid, liquid and gases. So, we will do a slightly more depth of understanding of these three. When you say that the material property is on account of atoms and their movement in the material, we talk about kinetic theory of matter. As we describe it, the study of atomic or molecular activity to understand the properties of the material in a particular state is called kinetic theory of matter. Some questions must arise in everybody's mind. What is the size of these atoms? Are there smaller parts of this atom? How are they placed inside materials? And what is this kinetic that we are talking about? What is in motion? Well, atoms are very small. Their size is 10 raised to the power of minus 10 meters. A unit angstrom is associated with this. They are placed in solids very close to each other and therefore are confined in a particular space. There must be some forces acting between atoms which hold this entire thing together and these are called interatomic or intermolecular forces. In crystalline solids, there is a typical arrangement in which atoms are placed the bond angles, the bond lengths, bond energies are all fixed. Where is then this movement? Because they are able to conduct, because they can show different properties, optical, thermal, we then can say that their atoms must be in motion. Vibratory motion is the only allowed method of movement inside solids. In the liquid state, the atoms are further apart and of course, properties like evaporation would suggest 
that there must be some particles which are moving fast and they can even escape from the liquid surface. So, the movement of these atoms or molecules must be vibratory, rotational as well as translational. In the gaseous system, you can understand that since there is no fixed volume, the attraction between atoms must be very little. And therefore, if you change the container from a small to a bigger one, the gas would occupy the large space that the bigger one is offering. So, that is why they have no particular shape and no particular volume. So, we can sum up matter is made up of particles, they are constantly in motion. The energy of motion is called molecular kinetic energy. The amount of kinetic energy in a substance is related to its temperature. After all, we have seen that evaporation increases with temperature, diffusion in gases increases with temperature. The interparticle separation depends upon the state of the matter. So, we have kinetic theory for solids, liquids and gases. In solids, the kinetic theory will give us results which will indicate why the melting point is fixed, why the thermal properties are well defined, why can we not compress a solid beyond a particular point. That means, there must be forces of repulsion between atoms, their motion must be restricted in a particular limited region and that they do their, they can change their shape only if temperature increases and they can come back to it, the properties of elasticity etcetera will give you evidence that there must be forces of attraction as well. In the liquid state, the atoms and molecular activity increases. However, the extra energy only allows them to flow, spread, take the shape of the container they are placed in. Boiling and evaporation we have all experienced in our home and that is suggestion enough that the particles or atoms or molecules in the liquid state are capable of having high kinetic energies. Surface tension, capillarity, flow etcetera can all be explained in terms of kinetic theory of liquids. In gases, the separation between atoms is very much larger than that in solid and liquid. Tens of angstrom, quite far apart and the molecular activity is also quite high. This is because they are allowed to move in the space. What kind of movement is there? How can we talk about the gas which is different from solid or liquid state? If the gas is not enclosed in a container, we know it will fly away. That means, the choice of choosing any direction for the motion of its atoms or molecules is also there. What happened after Dalton's proposal of atomic theory? Many experiments were being done and these experiments were yielding different types of results. All the experiments being done on gases was a question mark because gases were very versatile, they could compress, they could change their volume, they could change their pressure, their temperatures could also change because of variation in pressure or volume. So, most of the work done by Boyle, Gay Lussac, Charles were all on enclosed gases. They formulated after experimentation, they proposed hypotheses which became laws later on. What work was done and on what and which gases? They worked on hydrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, argon. They mixed them together because they did not read these gases did not react with each other. And they wanted to study what happens if we took a certain mass of gas. 
So, if you recall, Gay Lozac, after his work, proposed when gases combine chemically to yield another gas, their volumes are in ratios of small integers. That means there was a definite rule which was followed for combination of gases. Avogadro's hypothesis says that equal volumes of all gases at equal temperature and pressure have the same number of molecules. His proposal was even so strange that he says that 22.4 liters of all gases at STP have the same number of molecules. This led to talking about the mole and you know that Avogadro's number is very large 6.023 into 10 raised power of 23. It is a huge number, but this came out of experimental work. So, it is an empirical result. Boyle's experiment, he confined a small amount of gas, changed its volume and studied what happened to its pressure. And this he did keeping the temperature constant. He contributed, which is now Boyle's law, which says that the volume of a closed mass of gas is inversely proportional to the pressure provided the temperature remains the same. Work of Charles came out as Charles law, very important and very path breaking result came out of his work. He said that if you have an enclosed gas, a fixed mass of gas and you increase its temperature, then its volume would increase if the gas was allowed to expand. If the gas was cooled, its volume would become lesser. It is not a very big thing that he said, but what came out of it was this, that if you reduce the temperature to a certain value which we now call 0 Kelvin, the volume of the gas would become 0. What would happen to the volume of the molecule? This is a very big question that physicists are still facing. However, we are using the Kelvin scale and 273 is a number that we add to any temperature worked out in Celsius to get it in Kelvin. So, 0 Kelvin corresponds to minus 273 degrees Celsius. More insights came from experiment work by Clausius. Maxwell, Boltzmann, Kelvin and all of it sometimes triggered questions like why does a gas have so many specific heat? By specific heat we mean the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one mole of gas by 1 degree Celsius. Solids and liquids do not give that kind of problem over a certain interval of temperature change, the specific heat is very much constant. However, it is not the case for gases. So, they had to describe specific heat at constant volume and specific heat at constant pressure, which means if the volume of the gas is maintained constant, it is not allowed to increase or expand or decrease in its volume then the change in temperature requires a certain definite amount of energy for one mole of gas. Such like variations in the study brought people to think, how do we explain such properties? The challenge when study of gases was on was primarily that real gases were not behaving the same way as ideal proposals were. That means, that for all pressures and for all temperatures, the gases were not following Boyle's law, Charles law. Therefore, the question was why this peculiar behavior? Is there any way that we can explain this? And this constantly formulated methods and designs to understand gases. There are four parameters that we look at when we talk about a gas and its study. Mass of the chosen gas, whether we take it in kilograms or mole, the pressure of the gas, 
the volume of the gas and the temperature of the gas. Then we say that okay, if this is the condition, a certain volume of gas can be understood in terms of the molecular activity happening in it. So, the kinetic theory of gases makes certain simple assumptions and uses simple Newtonian rules to establish that the pressure exerted by a gas on the walls of the container is due to collisions of molecules with the sides of the container. What does that mean? It means that you are to imagine a container in which you place your gas and you say that the pressure that it is exerting is as a consequence of the molecular activity in it. Therefore, you can understand that the interest of temperature and increased activity would fall in place. You would understand if the pressure was too high, then why would the activity be more? You would also understand if the temperature was too low, why would the activity become very small. So, deviations from ideal gas situations were also answerable by choosing this kinetic theory. Temperature and kinetic theory of a molecule can be related by mathematical expression doing the kinetic theory of gases. The most probable speed all particles do not move with the same speed in gases. So, what is the most probable speed at which they would be moving at any instant of time can be calculated by using certain statistical methods suggested by Boltzmann and Maxwell. So, the kinetic theory assumes for gases that they are made up of molecules, molecular volume is negligible as compared to the volume of the gas. Molecules are in constant but random motion. The movement of molecules is governed by Newton's laws. That means they follow Newton's first law, second law and third law. The molecular collisions are perfectly elastic which means that the total kinetic energy and total momentum of the system at all times remains the same. Empirical results caused everybody to think about methods to explain and methods to find solutions to explain the result from the experiment. And this is what has led to kinetic theory of gases. So, we see it was the experimental results that describe the macroscopic view of the gases that means how it behaves as a whole and in turn impelled us or impelled the scientists to think about what is happening inside the gas in the container in which it is held. And that gave the microscopic view which we now call the kinetic theory of gases. Kinetic theory of gases can easily explain most of the empirical results. It can as I as we have been talking about can explain how a real gas behaves as compared to an ideal one. Because the ideal gas solution is true only under very high temperature and low pressure. That can be explained using kinetic theory of gases kinetic interpretation of temperature, understanding specific heats etcetera is a result of understanding kinetic theory of gases and making use of it to explain each of these phenomena. So, when you do kinetic theory of gases and try and find the pressure exerted by the gas or connected to the temperature of the gas you keep these things in mind so that it becomes easy for you to understand. Music